Hello, I'm Harry Sherman, and I was born in Lamar, Missouri on May 8, 1884. I was the son of John Anderson Truman and Martha Ellen Young Truman. My family, which later included another boy, Vivian, and a girl, Mary Jane, moved several times during my childhood and youth. We first moved in 1887 to a farm near Grandview, and then in 1892, Independence, and finally in 1902 to Kansas City. As a young child, I attended public schools in Independence and graduated from high school in 1901. After leaving school, I worked briefly as a timekeeper for a railroad construction contractor and then as a clerk in two Kansas City banks. In 1906, I returned to Grandview to help my father run the family farm. I continued working as a farmer for more than 10 years. From 1905 to 1911, I served in the Missouri National Guard. When the United States entered World War I in 1917, I helped organize the 2nd Regiment of the Missouri Field Artillery, which was quickly called into federal services as the 129th Field Artillery and sent to France. I was promoted to captain and given command of the Regiment Battery D. My unit and I saw actions in the Vos, St. Mihil, and Meuse-Argonne campaigns. I joined the reserves after the war, rising eventually to the rank of colonel. I sought to return active duty at the outbreak of World War II, but Army Chief of Staff General George C. Marshall declined my offer to serve. On June 28, 1819, I'm sorry, on June 28, 1919, I married Bess Wallace, whom I had known since childhood. Our only child, Mary Margaret, was born on February 17, 1924. And from 1919 to 1922, I ran a men's clothing store in Kansas City with my wartime friend, Eddie Jacobson. The store, however, failed in the post-war recession, and I narrowly avoided bankruptcy. And through determination and over many years, I paid off my share of the store's debts. I was elected in 1922 to be one of the three judges of the Jackson County Court, and as a judge, my duties were in fact administrative rather than judicial. I built a reputation for honesty and efficiency in the management of county affairs. However, I was sadly defeated for re-election in 1924, but won election as presiding judge in the Jackson County Court in 1926. I won re-election in 1930, however. And in, 1940, in 1934, I was elected to the United States Senate, and I had very significant roles in the passage into the Law of Civil Aeronautics Act of 1938 and the Transportation Act of 1940. After being re-elected in 1940, I gained national pr prominence as chairman of the Senate Special Committee to investigate the national defense programs. This committee, which came to be called the Truman Committee, sought with considerable success to ensure that defense contractors delivered to the national quality goods at fair prices. In July 1944, I was nominated to run for vice president with President Franklin D. Roosevelt. And on January 20th, 1945, I took the vice presidential oath. And after Roosevelt's Unexpected death, only 82 days later, on April 12, 1945, I was sworn in as the nation's 33rd president. I later called my first year as president a year of decisions. I oversaw, during my first two months in office, the ending of the war in Europe. I participated in a conference at Potsdam, Germany, governing defeated Germany and to lay some groundwork for the final stage of the war against Japan. I approved the dropping of two atomic bombs on Japan on August 6th and August 9th, 1945. Japan surrendered on August 14th, and American forces of occupation began to land by the end of the month. This first year of my presidency also saw the founding of the United Nations and the development of an increasingly strained and confrontational relationship with the Soviet Union. 
My presidency was marked throughout by important foreign policy initiatives. <clears throat> Central to almost everything I undertook in foreign policy, which was the desire to prevent the expansion of the influence of the Soviet Union, the Truman docu Doctrine was an enunciation of the American willingness to provide military aid to countries resisting communist insurgencies. The Marshall Plan sought to rev revive the economic economies of the nations of Europe in the hope that communism would not thrive in the midst of prosperity. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization built a military barrier confronting the Soviet-dominated part of Europe. My recognition of Israel in May 1948 demonstrated my support for democracy and my commitment to a homeland for the Jewish people. The one time during my presidency when a communist nation invaded a non-communist one with the North Korea invaded South Korea in June 1950. I responded by waging undeclared war. <clears throat> in my domestic policies, I sought to accomplish the difficult transition from a war to a peace economy, economy without plunging the nation into recession, and I hoped to extend New Deal social programs to include more government protection and service to reach more people. I was successful in achieving a healthy peacetime economy, but only a few of my social program proposals became law. The Congress, which was more Republican in its membership during my presidency than it had been during President Roosevelt's, did not usually share my desire to build on the legacy of the New Deal. The Truman administration went considerably beyond the deal in the area of civil rights. And although the conservative Congress prevented my desire to achieve significant civil rights legislation, I was able to use my powers as president to achieve some important changes. <clears throat> I issued executive orders desegregating the armed forces and forbidding racial discrimination in federal employment. I also established a committee on civil rights and encouraged the Justice Department to argue before the Supreme Court on behalf of plaintiffs fighting against segregation. In 1948, I won election. I won re-election. My defeat had been widely expected and often predicted, but my energy in undertaking my campaign and my willingness to confront issues won a majority of the votes. My famous whistletop campaign tour through the country has passed into political folklore, as had the photograph of myself holding up the newspaper, whose headline declared, Dewey defeats Truman. I left the presidency and retired to independence in January 1953. For the next two decades of my life, I was delighted in being Mr. Citizen, as I even called myself in a book of memoirs. I spent my days reading, writing, lecturing, and taking long, brisk walks. I took particular satisfaction in founding and supporting my library, which made my papers available to scholars and which opened its doors to everyone who wished to have a glimpse of my remarkable life and career. Sadly, though, on December 26, 1972, I passed away, and my beautiful wife, Bess Truman, died on October 18, 1982. We are buried side by side in the library's courtyard.